Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone is enjoying their week and getting ready for Christmas. In this episode, I wanna tackle off the uh, shifter box, but before I do that, I wanna turn my attention to those headers that I wasn't too happy with in the episode before. They weren't too great when I tried to polish them out and clean them up, so I've actually gone further and cleaned them a little bit more, and I've thrown on primer, and now I'm gonna throw on a base coat. First coat, always a light coat, just to get that tack surface. Maybe two, three light coats, probably three, and then we'll start getting a little heavier and heavier each time. Don't overdo it right away, because it's really easy to get runs on surfaces like this. As well guys, follow the can instructions, they're there for a reason. With the VHT, it tells you to put it inside the oven, so I ended up putting this in the oven when I did the primer. Follow the instructions to make sure that the cure process is gonna just work perfectly on this, as, as best as possible at least, right? So, the prep is important, but at the same time, those instructions to curing the project that you're working on is just as important. And same thing goes with the base coat. Most likely has instructions to do the same process with curing it, so just do that. It, It'll just come out good. Now the main thing I want to focus on in this episode is the shifter box. A while back I actually did the cutout for this. And ever since I dropped the engine I've kind of just had it sitting. So today I want to make like a housing to protect the underneath of the box from any road conditions, salt, dirt, water, whatever it may be. I also want to be able to drill out the opening for the rest of the linkage in there. First we're going to turn our attention to closing up this area here in a nice box and we'll weld this up in here and get it done. So after work today, I headed over to the metal supermarket here by my house. I got some scrap metal. They were kind enough to actually cut it for me, so I know that every cut here is perfect. I didn't want to have to do this with a grinder. What I did is I actually measured my opening, which was a four and a half by four and a half inch square. I measured the depth of the bottom of the shifter box, which was two inches. So I had them cut two pieces for me at two inches four and a half inches long. And then I had them cut an eight and a half inch piece by four and a half inches wide, which I am going to basically bend in a U shape. And then I'm going to attach these two inch pieces on the sides to close it in and make it the box. So the next thing is just to measure out two inches on each side. And what we're gonna do is put this in the vise and start bending it until we make a nice U shape. Tighten it down. And we should be able just to bend this. That should be all right. That's better. So that's one bend. We'll do the other bend. And that's what I want. All right, so with that done, I've gone forward as well and cleaned up all the edges so when we go ahead and weld this nicely, we have a clean metal surface to make contact with our welds. All right guys, so there we are. We just welded up in here, all done. I just used my uh, flux welder again. Nothing too crazy in here. It doesn't have to be incredible welds as long as we're just closed up nicely. And uh, I'll try and clean this out a little bit, but we are done for this part. All right, so here we are with the box underneath. Next thing I'm gonna do is work on this part of the cable here, getting this attached. Instead of just playing a guessing game and just making a random cut in this area, I'm gonna line it up nicely and uh, basically drill through from the bottom end up so I can make myself a nice opening. One last thing as well, if you are ever working underneath your vehicle, be sure to that your jack stands are set properly. As well, have some backup stands. 
I am using some additional stands that I used to have in the very beginning of my episodes when I used to just have the body of the car on uh, those wooden planks. Not to say something will happen or has happened already that's made me do that, but if anything did, I feel like I'd have a better chance of getting out of that situation if it did arise. Alright, so I've already made basically a marking here. I have a little tiny cup right here filled with some oil just to keep the bit from getting too hot. Success. Let's take a look. Whoa. next thing to do is straighten this out nicely and start working on drilling the two holes in there so I can mount this to the underbody. Start it off with an eighth inch pilot hole then hit it with a quarter inch. All right, so with the box now in position, now we're gonna start drilling in our holes. After drilling all the four holes, I just put the bolts through just to kind of line them up and tighten them down, kind of basically just test fitting, making sure everything is working nicely. Uh, one thing I do have to do is actually disassemble the entire thing, clean everything up, give it a fresh coat of paint and reinstall it. but. This is how I've done my shifter box. So that pretty much sums up the fabrication end of the shifter box. You did see some like white putty around where I was doing those welds. Basically, I just did a bunch of stitch welds around and then I cleaned it up with some leftover epoxy putty and I just did it everywhere. I'm gonna sand it down, level it up, clean it, paint it, make it look really nice. The headers, they came out nice, especially being painted. They look way nicer in here and cleaner. The oil cap, I did a high gloss black on those. Same process, primed and painted. Lastly guys, I wanna wish you all a Merry Christmas. Enjoy your holidays, be safe, spend time with your family and friends. And as well, if you do have that extra time, don't forget to work on your car. Thanks again guys for checking in and I'll see you guys in the next episode.